see all of your faces. I know for weeks I saw a lot of your faces, but it was on a cutout and pictures. But today I actually get to see many of your faces, and it is, is exciting to have you here with us today. And again, for all those who have joined us on the live stream, we want to welcome them and thank them for coming as well and being a part of our service. And, uh, you know, we just have a great time in the Lord, and it is fun uh, to, to hear voices again singing praises to the Lord. And thank you for being here today. Thank you for uh, my staff who, who works to keep everything going and work figuring all this stuff out of getting everybody in and uh, keeping everybody safe. And also to, uh, uh, to all the volunteers, the ushers and greeters. Uh, it's taken a lot of people to get these services going. And man, I want to thank you personally uh, for all the work that you're doing and everything that you, that you uh, have done to keep, make us uh, be able to have these uh, worship services in here today. I also want to say thank you to the church, all of you, for your faithfulness throughout this, uh, th throughout this time, your prayers for us, your support, your staying connected with each other, your checking on each other, your faithfulness in giving. Uh, thank you so much uh, for allowing God to use you uh, during this time, and that we pray that he will continue to do that today. I want to preach a message entitled, How Are You Seeing Things? Last Wednesday night on our Facebook Live, if you haven't had a chance to, to view that at 6.30 on Wednesdays, uh, we want you to um, tune in and we have a great time and uh, we do some interviews with some members of our church. We have some fun activities that we're going to be doing. Uh, Kaylee wants me to uh, remind you about that, that... Uh, uh, she has now become my co-host, I guess, and so she's going to be a part of that, and she wants to do a new segment called Ask the Pastor. Yeah, so if you have any questions that you've ever wondered about the pastor, she wants you to get them to her, and she will ask me on live television. I told her I reserve the right to say no comment, but we would like for you to tune in on that, but uh, so help us out with that. Kaylee wants to be able to ask the pastor questions because if you don't, she'll probably make up some and I don't want her doing that. But uh, what I did Wednesday night, during the, every Wednesday night during the segment of that time, I take and have a, a Bible study. And I, I shared a couple of thoughts with you that week and then immediately after that, the very next day as I was beginning to uh, finish up everything for what I thought was going to be the sermon today, continue on with the immature church, God began to work on my heart with that little short Bible study that he did, and he said, there's more that I want you to share. And so today, if, if you hear a couple of these things, if you tuned in, then you will, you'll know that I mentioned a few of these things, but God really laid on my heart that I think is a very uh, relevant message, very important message for this time. Because what I want us to understand is how we see and perceive our world will dictate our ability to unify as a people. My friends, no one is in denial that we need to be unified. Amen? Our nation needs to be unified, not just by political parties, but by race, by gender, by nationalities. We need to be unified. We're living in a very tumultuous time. And so we're going to be looking today, but how are you seeing things this way? How are you viewing them? And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. I want, we're going to be reading starting at verse 17 about how we are going to actually be able to see things the way God desires for us to see them as a church, as a people, as a, as a nation. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. Ephesians chapter 1 starting at verse 17. Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus here, and he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness and power of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for just the praise and worship that we had here today. And God, as I continue now with this service, I, I pray that, God, you would speak through me. I pray, Father, that the words that I say, God, will not be my words, but they will be yours. And God, they will be given out as you desire. And I pray, Father, 
that they will be received by the hearers, God, in, with the heart that it was intended. And the Lord, we could begin to see a healing. We can begin to see uh, reconciliation. But God, it could begin right here, right now. And that God, you as uh, that you would open up our eyes, our spiritual eyes to you. That God, we could see everything as you see it. But God, let this message be your message. And let it be received by the people as you desire for it to be. And let it affect us, Lord, as you desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. There is a hip term going around our society today. And the hip term is, is, is woke. All right? That's a word that I hear a lot. I see it on social media all the time. I personally don't use it. And Josh let me know earlier before the service, after the second, first service, he said, yeah, I know that's not a term you apparently use a lot. And it's not. But, <laughs> amen, he says amen on that, that it's not. But what woke is, is it's the, the secular idea of alerting, being alert to social injustices in society. And so we hear that term that everybody wants to be woke. And that your desire and the society wants us as Christians, they want everyone to be woke, aware of things that are going on around us. People feel like that's something new. They feel like this wokeness is something that some elitist or some highly educated, highly uh, enlightened person came up with all of a sudden that this is what we need in our society. We need people to be Woke. But I want you to understand, this is not a new philosophy. This is exactly what God has called for us in our world today. This is not a new matter, uh, not, not a new concept. That This is really what God is wanting. As a matter of fact, I would dare say by what I'm hearing in society, every time I hear this word woke, I would dare say that the majority of those people who use the word woke with this idea of social injustice need to wake up. Because what they're doing is they're beginning to look at this, and this is why I asked you the question, how are you viewing these things? Because we need to be viewing from them from the eyes of God. Listen, my friends, God will wake people up when we turn ourselves to Him. As a matter of fact, again, those who are calling out for the world to be woke need to wake up. Why? Because the first thing I want us to see is that with that we see things in our natural self in our natural world that's what they're wanting us to do see things see things as as you need to see them live in, in our natural world but may i share with this this with you that our perspective if and that's what they're saying look in the worldview at our by our perspective but can i share this with you that the natural state the natural world the natural individual when we begin to look at things through ourselves and we begin to be woke, what we're doing is that it is a self-centered mentality. As a matter of fact, you listen to a majority of people who say that you need to be woke, and what they're basically telling you is you need to be more like me, that I have arrived, I have gotten this, I have been enlightened, and you need to be more like me. My friends, listen to me, that's a self-centered mentality. In myself, and I'm going to break some news to you. In myself, I am naturally selfish. Amen? But can I break something to you? That in your natural self, you are naturally selfish. So everything, if we do it by just what I think and what I feel, we are self-centered. And basically what I'm saying is that this is there's no way that I can be woke the way God wants me to be woke if I am self-centered. Because here's what happens with self-centered mentality. It's first and foremost, it's by how I feel. Basically by emotion. My friend, a self-aware or a natural mentality or a natural world is self-centered and it's dictated by how I feel today, by emotion. Can you tell today that our world is driven by emotion? Emotion is driving everybody. And the one thing that I've found out that is that if you are driven by emotion, you're going to be irrational biggest part of the time. And here's the other thing about emotions. Folks, emotions go up and down. Amen? I, I, that's proof. Come to my house. Wife and three daughters. Whoo! 
emotions. So we can't be guided. And I'm an emotional person as well. And I have to be real careful that I'm not guided by my emotion because emotions can get the best of me. Emotions will cause me to act irrationally. Emotion will cause me to do things that under normal circumstances I probably wouldn't do and I probably wouldn't say. And our emotions cannot... And here's the next thing I understand about emotions. Eventually, emotions will change and that which you felt strongly about just about two days ago, eventually that's going to to go down and the, the, if you will, the adrenaline and all that's going to fade. And nothing gets done when it's only done by emotion. So it's an emotional thing. It's a self-centered and emotion. But not only that, it's, it's how I was raised. Not just how I feel, but it's often how I was raised. None of us were raised the same, amen? You weren't raised like me and I wasn't raised like you. You don't know my situation. I don't know your situation. And so if we are going to do it by our natural world, our natural self, then we're going to have problems because we were all raised differently. And we say, well, but there's this nature-nurture thing. And that, that just because we're all, uh, we, we may have the DNA, do you understand that even having the DNA doesn't make us all the same? Even family members aren't the same. But how we were raised is effective. It, 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 it changes. And, and it, it, it affects our lives. A lot of people deal with how I was raised and how you were raised. And, and it affects the way we think. Because it's this idea of, of, our, of nurturing that we can adapt to, to our situation. A case in point, many of you know that, uh, that I have three daughters, right? Two of them are my biological daughters. Jade is not my biological daughter or Martha's biological daughter. Everybody knows that, right? If you didn't, there you go. Jade is not biologically mine. But Jade has been ours basically since she was like a third grader, fourth grader. And there are times that when Jade and I are together and, we, and she may leave, somebody looks at me and goes, there's no way you two aren't related. There's no way. She acts just like you. And if Jade, you're watching... There you go, bud. Thank you. Or you're welcome. No, I'll say you're welcome. People say, you, you've got to be related. But we're not. As a matter of fact, we, sometimes we're sitting around, we'd be watching a, a mystery show or something, and there comes a point that uh, something will happen, and I'll go, dun dun dun. At the same time, she'll do it too. And I'll look at her and go, whoa. She goes, no, please, no. But this idea of, of how the surroundings... Folks, we were not all brought up in the same surroundings. So it is impossible for us to, to base our woke abilities on this idea of self-centeredness. But it's also not just by how I was raised, but by my circumstances. I react and I act by my circumstances, whether they are agreeable with me or not. If my circumstances are good, I react one way. If my circumstances change, and we all are fully aware that our circumstances change, amen? What I'm dealing with changes. My circumstances in my life are so much different than they were when I was a young man. Many of you know how I was raised. Man, I was, we were raised dirt poor. We, I was raised, when people ask, were you raised in a barn? I can tell them, yeah, I was. Literally, a garage. But my circumstances are different. So I'm telling you, I look at things differently now than I did when I was, a, when I was growing up. So our circumstances, we, we base everything on circumstance. But listen, this is the only way that we can through our natural self. So everybody is calling out to be woke. But all of the perspectives change and cannot be fully counted on. We cannot count on our emotions. We cannot count on how we were raised. We cannot count on our circumstances. And so it's basically a self-centered perspective. But not only the natural world is self-centered, but it's also skewed. Do you realize that our perspective can be manipulated? Amen? What do you think the news medias are trying to do right now? Social media is a tool. And people are using it. Now, I'm not going negative. I'm not going to talk about a, a station, their stand or whatever. I'm just telling you, they're, they're there to skew your perception. And if you're not careful, you can, get, you can get an idea that's not really there. It can be manipulated. It can be changed. 
And if it's manipulated, if it's changed, then I am basing my wokeness on the idea of what somebody else is telling me. The news, the commercials, commercials are there. You know what commercials try to do? They try to skew your thinking. You know what they're telling you? Is that you might not have known this, but before you watched this commercial, you didn't know it. But now that you've watched this commercial, you can't live without our product. You need what we have. And everybody goes, whoo, I got to have that. So you know what they just did? They manipulated my view. That which I didn't think I needed, now I think I need. And I can't live without. Where just a few seconds ago, I didn't need it. So commercials are there. That's why they pay millions and millions of dollars to get their 30-second ad on the TV, on the Super Bowl. That's why they try to do it. They want to manipulate and make you think something that may or may not be real. Commentaries, shows, programs on television. They're there to skew, and if you're not careful, you can be skewed by something that may or may not be real. But not only that, I want you to understand, natural man cannot be truly woke. Natural man cannot be truly woke. What we do is, we, the, someone once said, we see the world not as it is, but how we are. So can I tell you today, the natural world, the natural world and the natural worldview cannot heal our wounds. And folks, I'm here to tell you there are wounds that need to be healed today in our nation. That natural wokeness cannot heal those wounds because they're going to be based on our own self. We understand that the natural view cannot truly unite. And my friend, there needs to be a uniting around our nation by people with race, by people with gender, by people even political, by people of nationalities. There needs to be a unity here. And my friends, listen to me. It is important that we have it. We must have it. And we don't have it right now. But I want to tell you that natural man cannot give it to us. The natural view can't do that. There needs to be a peace in our nation today. But I want to tell you, natural man cannot bring peace. Our natural states will only bring divisiveness. Listen to me. We view things by how we are and what we think and how we feel. And, and, and listen, that can't work. So what do we do? Well, now I want to get to the text. Amen. My sermon just started. Let's look at the text because here I want to give you today. I want to give you how we're going to be able to do the things that we need to do in this nation. And my friends, there's got to be a lot of work. Because I want you to know the second point. God truly wakes people up. Amen. You want to be woke, you turn to God. You turn to Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, my friends, He will wake you up. How will He wake us up? By the first thing we look in this text. He wakes us up by a spirit of wisdom and revelation. His spirit, his spirit brings wisdom to us. It's the, it's, he brings us a new revelation by knowing him. But I want you to understand, it's not a factual knowledge. It's not just, well, I know what the Bible says. Folks, listen, can I tell you this, and, and please understand my heart. I don't care what you know in your head about the Bible. I know that gets the deacons worried right there. I don't care what you know in your head about the Bible. I care what you know in your heart about the Bible. I want to know how the Bible has been affecting you. I want to know how the Word of God permeates into your soul. Because if it's only in our head, we, it, we will not be awoke. We will not be a woke person if it's only right here in our brain. But man, when it's in our heart, that's when it happens. The Bible tells us, be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't be trained, don't be skewed, don't be manipulated, don't be woke by the things of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You want to think differently? You want to be aware of things that are going on around us? Man, you turn your heart to Jesus Christ, and He will come and His Spirit will give us a spirit of knowledge and revelation. And He will tell us what we're to be doing. In other words, what he's going to do is he's going to be, let us become aware of all that's going on. A lot of people say, well, pastor, that's kind of simplistic, isn't it? It is. You really want to see things change? Turn to Jesus. 
Because he will give you a spirit of revelation. He will let you see what's really going on. I mean, you won't be manipulated by the news. You won't be manipulated by emotion. You won't be manipulated by circumstances. You will be transformed by God himself who will reveal these things to you. He will will reveal the truth of injustices. He will reveal the truth of need. He will reveal all these truths to us as people. Now here, and, and, and boy, I could be an infomercial right now, but wait, there's more. Not only will he reveal the the truth to you, but here's what he'll also do. My friends, he will tell us how to deal with it. He'll tell us what to really do. Man, you you want to heal the injustices? God will tell us that they're real, and they are, but he'll also tell us how to deal with them. And here's the cool thing about that. He He will tell us all the same thing. Why? Because he's one God, one spirit. That he will reveal one truth. Man, God's not going to reveal 30 different truths to us. He's going to reveal one truth. He's not going to reveal 30 different methods. He's going to reveal one method. So he says, I pray that you will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Become aware of what's really going on. And my friends, listen to me. I'm here to tell you there needs to be change in our nation. Oh, that'd be a good place for a powerful amen. Amen. There needs to be change. But that change is not going to come by the intellectuals of our society, by those who have thinking themselves above everybody else, that they are woke and everybody else is nothing but a country bumpkin. It's going to come when people allow God to permeate into their lives and transform us and transform our nation. But not only does he call for a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation, but, it's, but being enlightened. Being enlightened, this is spiritually aware. In other words, what it's going to do, it will make us so aware of what we're really up against. Now, it's easy to say, well, I'm a woke person. I know what we're up against. If you think it's anything other than a spiritual battle, you're wrong. Then you're not woke as you think you are. He says here that the eyes of your understanding or the eyes of your heart that we just sang about, the eyes of your heart might be opened, being enlightened. In other words, become aware. Men, you want to be aware of the problems in our nation? Turn to Christ. He will make you aware of them. Man, he will make your heart sensitive to each other. He will make your heart sensitive to the needs of those who are in need. He will make you aware of those injustices that are being done in in our nation today. He will make you fully aware of those. And here's what he's going to make you aware of mostly. What we're really up against. Can I tell you, we're not up against people the bible tells us in galatia in ephesians 6 12 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood this is not listen to me this is not a people issue and until we understand that we're hopeless Nothing is going to change when we begin to think it's just you and me. It's you against me and us against them. My friend, listen to me. We've got it all wrong. He says this is not wrestling against flesh and blood, but listen. He says, but against, oh, listen, it gets scarier than that. He says we're truly the evils of this world. We are wrestling against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That wakes you up, folks. Because if we can become awake and realize it's not man against woman, it's not uh, uh, race against race, it's not group against group, it's not political party against political party, it is against Satan and his demons. And he's bringing confusion and he's making people think things that aren't, not, aren't real. He skews the truth. Look throughout Scripture, and you will find every single time Satan comes to somebody, man, he will skew their view of God. That's his goal, to skew up their view. Because if he can manipulate their view of God, they would, then people won't follow him. 
So he says, being enlightened, being spiritually aware. Oh, my friend, can I tell you today, we are dealing with God-sized troubles. Man can't fix what we're dealing with. Being woke won't change a cotton-picking thing. God will change us. God will transform us. And then well, not only will He give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, not only will He bring enlightenment to us, a spiritual enlightenment, opening up our spiritual eyes, He then says here in this verse 18, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. What He is telling us today as a nation, my friend, there is hope. There is hope. Even in times like these, there's hope for healing. There's hope for the injustices to be, to be done away with. There's hope for reconciliation of people. There's hope for love to reign in our nation. There's hope. I found this quote. And it's from Charles Colson. And he, 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 he said this. I meet millions who tell me they feel demoralized and decayed around us. Can I tell you today there's a whole lot of people that are feeling that decay and they feel demoralized? Can I tell you that we live in the most prosperous time of the history of the world, but can I tell you that we live in the most hopeless situations? Man, I see it. I hear people all the time saying these things are hopeless. So he said, I meet millions who tell me that they feel demoralized by the decay around us. And he asked the question, where is the hope? So we cry out today, God, we need hope for our nation. God, we need hope for healing. God, we need hope for reconciliation. Where is our hope? Charles Coson said this, the hope that each of us have is not in who governs us. It's not in what laws are passed or even what great things we do as a nation. Our hope is in the power of God working through the hearts of people. That's where our hope is in this country, and that's where our hope is in this life. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. It's on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground... Sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frames, the sweet things that the world tries to skew to tell me, but wholly lean on what? Jesus' name. Oh, preacher, that's too simple. Oh, preacher, our problems are too big that you can just preach a little sermon like that and think things to be changed. No, I don't. I, I think it is that simple. I, I Listen to me. I believe it is that simple. If Christ were to bring revival to our hearts, oh, we'd become so aware of the, of the needs of people around us and the struggles that people have. They're real, my friends. They're real. The need for healing is real. But it's only going to come when we turn our hearts to Christ and truly, truly wake up. Truly become aware of the spiritual battles that are going on. Man, you want to be woke? You want to brag about being woke? Quit listening to the things of this world and listen to the Holy Spirit of God speaking to His people. Those who claim to be His have come into our community and you remember what they said? Turn the world upside down. What He basically said was they turned the world right side up. Because the world is upside down now, my friend. Natural state of man is upside down, but God has come that the world can be saved and that everything can be turned right side up. I wrote this week, 
of that old song that we used to sing. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. So Jesus is the answer what, to what question? To what problem? Can I tell you this and I'm done? He is the answer to every question, every problem. Jesus is the answer. I pray, Paul writes, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, give to me, give to this world, give to this nation the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceedingly greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty, mighty, mighty power. Oh, the power of Jesus, nothing can withstand it. Not even the hatred and bigotry can stand against the power of Jesus Christ. Working in the hearts of His people. My friends, we need to pray for our nation. Oh, we need to pray. We're going to take just a moment when, and I'm going to ask if the uh, praise team will come on up as we step into this invitation time. During this time, what, what I'm going to ask you to do, what I'm going to ask you to do as a church, what I'm going to ask all those who are viewing us uh, on the live stream service, what I want you to do is in just a moment we're going to stand. And when we stand, what I want you to do is I want you to stand saying to, to, to yourself, t- saying to the people right next to you, saying to everybody in this congregation, saying to everybody on the live stream who's going to see the back of your heads when you stand up. Don't get, bar- don't get worried. But they're going to see the back of your heads. Man, you're going to tell everybody, we are standing together at First Baptist West. We want God to move. We want healing. We, we, want, we want these things to be, be calmed down. And we want truth. We want justice. Man, we, we, want, we want equality. We want these things. We're going to stand together as brothers and sisters in Christ, allowing God's Spirit to work in us. And maybe, man, you may even want to come to the, to the, to the, to down here to the steps and fall on your knees before God and pray for our nation. Pray for people to be healed. Pray for wounds to be healed up. Pray for hearts to be mended. Pray for us to wake up. Please, my friends, wake up. We need Jesus. Our world needs Jesus. So I'm going to lead you in prayer, and we're going to stand, and man, I want you to either sing along, or I want you to come forward and pray, or I I want you to to maybe sit back down and and pray. Or if you're at home, I want you to to, to join in singing, or I want you to maybe even stop what you're doing, and I want you to pray during this song. Pray for God's enlightenment to be upon us. Pray for God to create in us a, a, a pure heart, clean hands, and unify our spirit. These are important times that we're living in. Oh, we need Jesus. Would you join me, brothers and sisters? Would you join me? Would you all join me? Father, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your watch care over us. And God, we take this moment now as we step into this time of praise and worship to to call out to you to heal our nation. To bring love to us. To bring unity to us. To bring healing. And Father, I pray for everyone that's in this room. I pray for everyone watching that, God, we would take very seriously these next few moments. As this song is being presented to you, God, that we would sing along with it. Or Father, we might even come forward and get on our knees to pray. Or Father, we just humble ourselves right there at our seats or at our homes or in our car, wherever we're watching this. That, God, we would humble ourselves before you to pray. God, enlighten us. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. We want to see you and we want to see it as you. In these next few moments, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me?